dissect him with Mr. G, Earthworm, in three, two, one. Let's go ahead and get inside here now, and let's start making an incision right here by the prostomium, dorsally, and just just lightly. Let's let's make the incision. You can see a little bit of preservative that might um, be oozing out of the specimen. All it is is preservative uh, that's used to keep the organism from decomposing and being fresh for you. Okay. So again, I'm I'm just going from the anterior to posterior try not to go too deep and if you cut you know the intestine or the crop or the gizzard you know we'll, we'll do our best with what whatever we have okay just try to be very careful when you're doing that part all right so let's go ahead and put our scalpel off to the sides and I'm going to pull on the, the body wall just a little bit, pin down this side that's uh, closest to you, like so. And just laying it on the side. And there are there is some tissue that's kind of holding that body wall to the internal structures. And I'm going to tug on the skin right there. And I'm going to free that up just a little bit. Cut some of that connective tissue. I'm going to tug on that. I know I'm moving this around a little bit. My partners that are filming this probably drives them crazy. Yeah, there's the intestine right there. Fortunately, like I said, I've also cut through that before. So just, just be really, really careful the best you can. And we'll, we'll try to get through this without too much damage to the digestive tract there. Now the digestive tract run, runs all the way through uh, from uh, you know anterior to posterior. A super long intestine, right? And so it eats its way through the soil and loves to to graze out on the top of the, the soil. Oh yeah, I hit that just a little bit. Not too bad though. Okay, so I'm going to tug on this body wall just a little here. And in doing so, that's going to allow me to get inside. In fact, I'm going to spin this. A lot of times I'll spin it this way. And then I can get on this side and I can see that just a little better. Now when the earthworm moves, it has two muscles that are in the body wall. One of them is called the circular, and the other one is called the longitudinal. And the circular will help the body to elongate, and the longitudinal will help it to, to shorten. And so when it, it alternates uh, contracting, you know, the, the longitudinal and the circular, then it can move. And they'll move pretty, pretty quick. Uh, you wouldn't think so, but when they go down their, um, their little, little tube, their burrow, they can get down real fast. Yeah, we're using insect pins here, different insect pins to help us with holding this out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we need to cut that just a little more. And I know that's hard to see. But we almost have this open the whole way, so we'll be able to see it a little better. We'll spin that back around for you. You know, there is this wise tale that if, you know, you're in the garden and you uh, are using your shovel and you, you hit an earthworm, and you end up cutting it in half, that it's it's okay because you know the other half, that both halves will you know regrow into uh, an earthworm, and that's simply not the case. So earthworms are quite a complex bilaterally symmetrical organisms, and there's a whole bunch of stuff right up here. There's a lot of stuff, 
and it needs all this stuff to survive, right? It needs to have its mouth, and it, it needs to. It won't regrow one if it if it breaks in half, or you chop it in half by with a shovel as you're going through the garden. So it just just isn't so. All right, let's take a look at the at the insides here. Oh, we got a cerebral ganglia right there. Not too bad. All right. And pin this out down here a little ways. Now, as you can tell, I got down a little too deep right here. This is where you need to be, uh, you know, really careful as you're going through it. All right. So let's start from the, the anterior and let's move to the posterior. These are the basic terms in anatomy that your your teacher will, will ask you to know. So the first one is uh, the pharynx. And so this is the pharynx right here. This is a muscle that uh, it uses to bring in the food. It's like a muscular pump. And that then brings in the food through the mouth. And between this pharynx and this little doodad right here, this is the crop, is a tube. Uh, and that tube is right here. I'm going to try to get underneath it and kind of tug on it just a little bit. That's the esophagus. So you know the mouth is here with the prostomium. The food comes into the pharynx, into the esophagus, and then moves down through that tube, the esophagus, and goes into the crop. The crop is very, very soft to the touch. Now just behind the crop, it's a little harder, this organ right here, and that is called the gizzard. The gizzard grinds up the food and there's um, like little rocks and pebbles and sand that get in there and that helps to uh, you know further grind that up and then it goes into the intestines and the intestine pretty much looks the same all the way down and we know that on the posterior end there's a little opening called the anus that the waste product come out so let's go from the most anterior portion real quick so here's the prostomium the fleshy pieces that overhang the mouth the mouth then leads into a muscular pump we call the pharynx. The pharynx then delivers the food into a tube called the esophagus, and I've got my probe just underneath that. That tube leads to the crop, uh, which is a soft, right? It kind of stores the food temporarily until it's ground up. And you can, you can see that this is very soft and delicate, and this is much harder and more muscular. So along with sand particles and little rocks, that food that's ground up in there can now then be delivered to the intestine and absorbed and delivered to the rest of the body cells through the circulatory system. Anything that cannot be digested obviously would be eliminated out uh, through the small opening on the posterior end called the anus. That waste is like black gold. It is extremely expensive, highly sought after, by gardeners because it's loaded with micronutrients. It's really good stuff for the garden. And the healthier the soil, the more of these uh, annelids you have in there. Okay, let's take a look at some stuff that is around the esophagus that kind of surrounds it. So these little black tubes right here, uh, there's five of them and they're called the aortic arches. So hearts, if you will, or tubes that act as uh, the hearts. Then a little farther down here, you have these white little uh, fleshy organs, and they're called the seminal receptacles and seminal vesicles. The seminal receptacles are the smaller ones here. They receive the sperm from the other, um, the other earthworm. The seminal vesicles produce the sperm to be delivered to the other earthworm. Okay. Then you have on top, running on top here dorsally, this vessel, that's the dorsal blood vessel, and that runs all the way across the top from the crop all the way down, the entire length of the annelid, okay? So let's, let's go over that again. You've got the aortic arches, or the hearts, that go over the top of the esophagus. Just posterior to that, you have these smaller little white blobs. These are the seminal receptacles, which receive the sperm from the other earthworm. The seminal vesicles are the larger ones here, these white organs, and they produce the sperm, which is going to be given to the other earthworm. Just uh, posterior to that, along the top, there is a dark tube that's going to run all the way across the top on the top of the 
the intestine of which I went cut a little too deep and hit that there, but that's going to run all the way um, posteriorly to uh, towards the anus. Okay. All right. Now on the anterior end, you should see just above the uh, the ganglia, and I have the ganglia right here. It's really small, little white piece. That's the brain. That's the basic commando center for the neurological system of the, the analid. So, very good. Thank you for doing that. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to see the ventral nerve cord and the ventral blood vessel. The easiest way to do that is, uh, and I'm going to spin this around right here, you're going to take the crop, you're going to put a little pressure on that crop, and when you do so, you're going to put it to the side. You can take your scalpel and lightly, just lightly go through that. So what I want to show you is the ventral nerve cord, and I want to show you the ventral blood vessel. The ventral nerve cord is right here. You see that little white cord? How cool is that? You guys, that is the ventral nerve cord that runs all the way down along the bottom side, ventral side of the organism. And you can see kind of some ganglia. See where it kind of bulges? Right? It kind of is a little larger and a little thinner, larger and thinner. Those are ganglia. Those are little nerve clusters that run all the way along there. That comes from the ganglia, remember, up here, or the, the brain. So right next to that, can you kind of see where you have a little darker vessel? I'll put my probe right underneath it. Woohoo! Got it. I didn't tear it, at least not yet. That's it. That is the ventral blood vessel coming from the aortic arches, right? So we have two two major blood vessels that we can see very easily, right? The ventral blood vessel and the dorsal, dorsal blood vessel. And here's our ventral nerve cord. Awesome. Okay, very good. And that will run the entire length of the organism on it. All right. So there is our, our basics to worm anatomy. We know it's in Kingdom Animalia. It's in a phylum Annelida. It's a segmented worm. This is a night crawler. We learned all the external anatomy and the internal anatomy. Hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about an earthworm. If you liked that and felt that it was uh, informative, please click like and subscribe to um, our videos. Appreciate your uh, support. Thanks, we'll see ya.